thank you for choosing to watch another free e-learning tutorial from daconane.com. Today's tutorial takes a comprehensive look at the iOS iMovie app. By the end of this free learning lesson you'll have all the skills you need to create a really sophisticated video on your iPad. So let's not delay a moment longer and dive right into today's learning. Okay, today's tutorial is going to be looking at iMovie for the iPad. Um, it's a deceptively simple tool to use and you can bang out a movie really quickly with it. But um, as we dig into it you'll see that there's quite a lot you can do with it. And it means you can actually be, make some quite sophisticated movies with your iPad. So it just let's open up iMovie here. And the first thing you'll see when you um, open up uh, iMovie is you can see all your projects and sitting here waiting for you to go. Um, you can click on theater mode or you can click on video mode but we're, we're not going to we're going to look we're going to jump straight into creating so if we look at the top right hand corner of the screen here there's a plus sign if we click on that and we can create new projects now I'm not going to bother today in today's tutorial with the trailer feature um, because it's self-explanatory and it's it's a good way to start if you want to learn how to use storyboards etc etc and, and, and the discipline of making short clips rather than long rambling ones but we're going to jump straight into movie section so I'm going to click on movie and the first thing you're presented with here is um, a whole series of themes that you can choose so um, you know that's entirely up to you so I'm just going to stick with modern keep it simple and again in the top right hand corner I'm going to click on the create button so here we go here is my iMovie interface and basically you can see the screen is largely split in two horizontally um, and then in the top half you can see that the screen is then being split vertically um, left and right. In the top right hand corner you can see that there are various options. There's video or photos and audio and we're going to work our way through each of those options to start off with. But what we're going to do is work on the basic structure of video. In other words getting your video clips into your movie and then sort of do some rough editing. So let's start off with video as you can see here. Um, and I'm going to click on all but you can see if you scroll down here through you can see that I can actually um, go to recent most recently added um, you can see that I can uh, other apps actually make apps <clears throat> for me that uh, iMovie can pick up so this is from Puppet Pals and indeed even my Instagram stuff but I'm going to come to recently added over here and we should see a whole bunch yes we can see a whole bunch of videos that I've taken of my garden so we're going to make a, a, a quick video about my garden and what you need to know is that the videos are added in order so the first video at the top of the stack here was the last video I took it doesn't matter because you can organize things around but that's what you need to know so this is the first video I took and if you click on it as I've done here you can see it becomes highlighted in yellow we have the opportunity to make sure that's the right clip and as you can see here there are three icons here and we'll go through each of those the first one on the left is the insert arrow and that just basically means just take the whole clip and whack it straight into the timeline but what we're going to do here is click on the play or the middle icon and you can see that there's um, yep this is the video I want um, I want this first okay so I'll just click on pause here and what I'll do is I'll add that and then I'm just going to add a couple more clips and I'll just add this one here there you go so now here is a very simple storyboard so here comes the first trick the first thing we'll do, you can see here that actually if, if I had lots of clips in sequence we can see that I actually can't um, see the whole the whole process here. So what I can do is on the timeline which is the bottom half of the page if I use two fingers and I um, move them together you can see that I can, see, I can now see all three of my clips so I, it's now easy for me to see in sequence um, my timeline. And that means let's just add something else. Let's, let's add very quickly. Let's just add a, a fourth element to my timeline. Ah, damn! I've put it in the wrong place. It that's one. That was the fourth one, not the first one. So I want to make sure that I can, if I want to move this, I'm going to press and hold, and I can move it along my timeline and slot it wherever I wish it to be. So that's that's really quite quite a, a neat feature. So it's a very quick way of you actually saying, mm, yeah, I want this here. Uh, no, I made a mistake, I'll put it back to where it was. So you can move things around. So by using two fingers and um, pinching them together, you can shrink your um, 
clips to the minimum size so that you can actually see them as um, a storyboard. And then when you want to get into editing, serious editing, you can do the exact opposite. If we want to look um, in the first clip here and we want to see it in detail, we can zoom right the way in and you can just see that I, I, I can now get down to um, individual frames that I want to do and sort of decide where I want to get to. And So it's a very useful feature. Finally, for this section of the tutorial, um, what we can also do is we can make mistakes. So for example, if I had selected uh, this clip here inadvertently, and uh, clearly this has nothing to do with my garden, I've made a mistake, how do I get rid of that clip? Well, it's again, it's quite easy. You press and hold on the clip until it expands, and then you can just slide it up, and you can see in the top left-hand corner there, you've got like a um, scrunched up piece of paper, and it deletes the um, clip from the timeline it doesn't delete it as you can see here it still remains intact okay so that's we've made our very basic storyboard so let's have a look at our clips here now we can see that um, I, I've got um, some clips in my first video here so again I'm going to stretch my timeline so I can actually um, edit this now to edit this video I actually don't want this bit of uh, deck here so what I can do is if I tap on my timeline um, and you can see that the clips highlighted I can actually from the um, head point the video playhead which is the white vertical line with it which is, it shows us where we are on the timeline I actually kind of want probably my video to start here so what I can do is I can clip touch the uh, clip and then grab the m large yellow bar that's on the timeline I can just keep moving it as you can see the timeline moves to the um, with, with my moving so I can just move it back so I can actually get it clipped exactly where I want it to be so now I've got this element of my my clip here alright so maybe maybe I want to start here because you can see it's moving that's a bit kind of awkward so what I can do there are some some features I can do in here but I want to show you what's happening first of all if we come up to here you can see now the orange bars on my timeline here. You can see that the, the very first clip here has now hasn't got the orange bar going completely across the entire clip. That's because I've edited out that first bit. If we come back to the end here, you think, yeah, I, I, I'm not sure there's, I'm not really sure there's, there's two clips here. So I might actually want to split this clip. And you might think, okay, how do I do that? So what I can do here is if I position the clip exactly where I want it to be, let's say I wanted that to be there, I'm going to do to there, I think. Now, to, I want to split this clip. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to swipe, I'm going to highlight my clip, and I'm going to swipe from top to bottom on the, pl on the um, play line. And can you see what I've done now is I've split my clip. So I've now got two clips. And you don't see a difference. There's no video transition. You don't see. And you think, well, why have I done that? Well, that's really quite interesting. There's, there's several reasons we can do that. But that allows you to, say, cut out the middle section. Let's just say I wanted to just play this bit here. And then actually what I want is to start from perhaps this more luxurious footage. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to highlight my clip I'm going to slice it down the middle there and so I'm going to now get rid of this middle clip get rid of that and so now I've got a video that seems to go straight through here but you know what can we do now so let's click on here um, and what I want to do is I actually want to freeze that I want to turn that into a still image and <clears throat> what you can see down here now is there's some options in the bottom left hand corner. The, the clip tool is obviously highlighted. If I click on the time tool, what you can see is there's some options here. I can either make that clip play faster or I can actually click on the freeze button. I'm going to click on freeze. And what that means is my image won't actually start moving. And what I can do now, of course, is I want the freeze image to be there. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to slice it on the frozen image and now I can highlight this let's come back 
to edit, highlight this and delete that. So now I've got a frozen image of the trees cutting straight into a panning shot of, so I can trim my video quite effectively. That's in one clip. And so you can see how that's um, a really useful set of tips and tricks to use. I've frozen one frame. I've split my initial one clip into three. Um, and you can see how that, that could be a really useful uh, tool to make your editing much more sophisticated. And again, in the bottom left hand corner, let's look at those options we've looked at. And the first thing we can look at here is um, the, the editing tool which we've been doing. So obviously you can do some course edits, you can slice and all that kind of stuff. Um, and here you can actually, um, in the timer tool, you can actually make a track faster or slower. So if you really wanted to emphasize something, we could we could make that pan across the um, the the, tr the tr tops of the um, tr uh, tree ferns here. We can make that much slower. And of course, if we make it slower, that has the effect of actually making the clip longer. So if we click play now, and you can see the preview here, it's much slower. And that's entirely up to you. Um, and if you don't like that effect, you can bring it back up to normal. Or indeed, you can make it faster. So that's up to up to your creativity. Um, also, if we, if we click on these clips here, um, I'm going to skip over audio for the minute uh, and we'll come back to audio in a minute and I'll skip on the uh, skip over the titles as well. We'll come back to that later. But this last option allows us to do some add some sort of coloring, if you like. And these are these are a bit like Instagram uh, filters, if you like. Um, so you can actually change the, the filtration here. So I've chosen Western. You can see how that makes it. Oh, I, don't, I don't really like using filters, but if you if you do. Um, the, you can you can actually um, change the color saturation using these filters and you can even make your films black and white if you wish to I mean I, I don't tend to use this kind of thing but you just need to know that they're there if you want to use them and of course you can um, just un undo things if you want to um, undo your choices up in the uh, left hand side there um, halfway up on the screen is that sort of bent over arrow pointing to the left is the undo I'm going to click on none so so those are the kind of the main features of um, let's come back to edit here of storyboarding your work um, and now now let's, let's let's look at audio so let's have a look down here and you've got a couple of options here um, again if you see where the, the, the undo um, icon that I talked about just before was there if you click on the, the, the icon next to it the sound wave icon click on here you can actually see the audio track um, and because I um, have most of these mute you can see there's very little background noise. Well, in fact, there was some background noise because there was the birds in the garden and the, the cicadas, etc., etc. So what we can do is we can try and improve this audio. So if we click on here and we click on audio down the bottom here, so we're looking at the audio track and we can see the audio track has been highlighted. We, at this time, if we click on click on the um, speaker icon, you can see instead of having the speed icon that we had before, we've got the volume icon. And we can use this and we can actually increase the volume of the track and you can see here, you can see that there was some little background noise and you can see now how that's been magnified. But um, I did this primarily to have some, some voiceover. But what you can do is if we come back into here and we click on audio again, um, you can see, oh sorry, I'll click on edit. Um, and one of the things you can see here is detach on the bottom right hand corner. If we click on detach, and what that does is it detaches my audio track from the actual track I was working on, which means that I can move it around if I want to. But what it also means is that if we choose to, um, we can actually edit the audio on this. And you think, I might actually, I don't want to increase the sound. I actually want to bring it down a little bit and use it as background music. And so we could click on the audio here. And I want to add some voice over the top. So let's click back on the track here and then click on audio. And so I clicked on the um, sound wave icon here. And then in the bottom right hand corner, you can see we've got some options here. And the middle option is the microphone. So now I'm going to add a backing track to this. So I'm going to click on the, uh, the microphone. And when I'm ready to record, I just click on the record button. It will count me down. And it will start recording everything that I'm saying. So as I talk, it's recording. I can talk for as long as I like. I, you can use the um, options of the images to actually help um, do my recordings, inform what I'm going to say, or I could just read from a script. So click on stop. And we can preview that. So let's click on preview or um, review. So look at that. 
and it will start recording everything that I'm saying. So as I okay, so we can hear that, and what we can do is click accept. Now that's just accepting the quality of my um, recording. So now I can click on this, and again I've got the same options again. I can make it uh, louder, or I can make it um, quieter as I as I wish to. Whilst we're on the theme of audio or adding audio to our tracks, what we can do is if we look in the top right hand corner here, we can look at photos, which I'll get onto in a moment. But if we look in audio, there's a whole bunch of um, audio options that we can do. So if we look at uh, theme music here, you can actually add music to your track. So let's have a look at some of these, some of these options here. Click on music. So you get the idea of the music. What we can do here is we can decide we like that. We can click. We can add that, and it's a it's a really smart piece of um, technology because it recognises when there's a voiceover track. So if we look at the start or listen to the start of this, it's going to be quite loud, and it will start recording everything that I'm saying. So as I talk, it's recording. Okay, what it's done there is it's 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 organised its. Um, levels to not compete with the audio but even again you can still click on this and you can still take the level down of the um, backing track so that it's actually still even quieter as you wish so if we can click on play again and it will start recording everything that I'm saying so as I so you can still you can still have that granularity and if you wanted to you can think well like I like that but I actually want to Im increase the, the the track of me speaking a bit higher so you can see I've just done that by clicking on the track itself or we can come back to here and we can increase the sound of the garden itself um, and set up a play at this and listen. And it will start recording everything that I'm saying. So, so again we can bring that down. I was too loud but I think you begin to see, hear the birds in the background. Click play again. And it will start recording everything that I'm saying. So as I talk... And you can hear the stream as well. Um, okay so again you can just play around with your audio on that. But obviously there's lots of stuff you can add in here. Now, there's sound effects which, um, I mean, frankly I don't use, but you know some people might want to put uh, sound effects in for, for comedic um, uh, ref, uh, you know, fun. So if I want to put crickets in, this is a, in this wildlife here, just click on crickets and add that. And the crickets will play. Okay, so and again, if you think well, this is ridiculous, I just want to get rid of it. You can just click on um, hold it, press and hold, and just remove it out, and it gets rid of it, just like you do an ordinary um, audio clip as well. So you can put sound effects in. Um, and then there's all a the bunch of stuff down here. Add your own recordings, so you can make your own recordings, and we'll do that later. Um, but then there's going to be the temptation to actually raid your iTunes store. Now you've got to be really careful about doing this, and but the best best advice is don't do it because obviously this is copyrighted music. It would be very simple for me to go and grab some music from my iTunes here and and whack it on, um, and of course that would contravene all kinds of copyright. So I'm not going to recommend you do that at all. But what I um, recommend you do do is to start thinking about um, if you're not happy with the theme music, what can I do? Uh, and fortunately there are some options here for you. So if we just switch across. We switch across to where are we going to go? Here. Now, this is something I recommend you have a look at. Um, this is the Free Music Archive, um, and these guys, um, there's tons and tons of music up here for you to grab and have a look at. Um, it's all royalty-free music. All you've got to do is give these guys a credit, um, and you can put that into your music. So please think very carefully about using this. That's um, the freemusicarchive.org. Um, and if you're in, of, of a creative um, disposition, then you can do something like go to soundation.com. Um, you can launch the studio and you can actually make your own work. Now, obviously, on an iPad, this is not going to work, but if you're using um, uh, perhaps the uh, Rover browser or just another computer, and you can save the music that you create and then put it onto your iPad via your iTunes account. So, um, Free Music Archive, there's tons of stuff to download. Soundation. You can make your own music, um, and the idea is that you stay um, on the right side of copyright infringement and not the wrong side. So coming back to our project here, so what you can do is um, you would save your work, you save it to your iTunes, um, and then you'd import that music you, of, of your own um, and put that in the in, as a background music if you wanted to. So that just about covers audio. So now that we've covered 
the main aspects of video editing, you know, storyboarding, adding audio, um, colorizing, all that kind of stuff, we can start looking at some other things we can look at. So let's just say, for example, I've shown you that you can actually turn um, a video clip into a still image, but if you wanted to add your own images, let's come to the end here. In fact, let's just squeeze it down so we can do our storyboard. Let's say I wanted to add a couple of images into here. So what we can use now is we can use the photos option. So I'm going to click on the top right here in the middle, click on photos. Um, it's just to show you the menu here. I can um, use um, recently added, I'll just click on one of these and I'm just going to grab uh, this picture I took of Cyclone Pam here off the internet. Now, again, same rules apply. What you can do is you can move that around to wherever you want to move it around, to move it to. And note how down here the theme music just stretches to the length of the video that you've got. Now one of the irritating things around adding images is they decide that they do like to kind of do this panning, zooming kind of thing going on, which personally I don't like. Um, and it's I find it quite irritating. I, I, if I, I want to put a picture in because I, I've composed it the way I want it to be composed. But you know, if you like this kind of thing, this 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 can be edited for you. So what you can do is if you click on here, highlight it, uh, this menu option comes up, pinch to position the start. So I can decide I want this picture to be all the way over here. Say if I wanted to, that's where I wanted to start with. And by the end of the picture, I want the the zoom to be over here. And so what will happen in my couple of seconds is that you'll see this come up uh, and you can you can be quite creative if you wish to but I'd actually like to see more of the picture so what you can actually do is say I want my start position to be here and then I want my start end position to be same thing and I I actually like to try and keep it in the same place so actually the picture doesn't move so now when I Press play. My picture doesn't move, but that's entirely up to you. And you can you you can option you can you know choose that option from this from this menu here at the side. It's a bit of a fiddle, but that's entirely up to you and how you want to make it work. Obviously, the same rules apply. So we can add title text, which we'll cover next, and we can you can use the color the color tools if you wanted to to make the same tone all the way through for your movie. So those same features are available to you in your pictures. And of course. Um, when it loads up, it's the default couple of seconds, and if you wanted to make that video or that image play for longer, you just simply grab one of the bars and you play it for as long as you wanted to, um, and that's that's entirely up to you. And the edit that I chose, it shouldn't move too much, but you can find you can fine tune that um, as you as you see fit. And so that's you can add as many pictures as you like. So of course, what mean what that means is that you can actually use iMovie to um, just put in a whole bunch of pictures and then do a voice over the top if you wish to. So that's another neat feature. And of course, one thing we didn't cover and haven't covered is that you can actually take videos and take images directly um, inside the app. So if, if you forget something in the bottom uh, left right hand corner down the bottom here, you can see you can activate the camera if you wish to um, and you can switch from video to camera um, and to add pictures and that will add them directly into your um, timeline if you wish to. So you know you can, you can if you can do something on the fly if you need to. So let's come on to text and titles now. So I'm going to put a title at the beginning of my video and the title style is going to be dictated by the um, the template style that I chose right at the very beginning. So I'm going to click on title here. Um, you've got some you've got some choices here. Um, I'm just going to choose I don't know standard something simple. We just tap in here, add some text. So once you've created your um, title, it's just a question of it will just play. As you can see, like that. Hit pause. Now, I'm just going to mute all this. Um, the one thing you need to know about titles is they're a bit of a pain, really, um, in the app. And that if I put a title on this, so let's say, for example. Um, I wanted to put a secondary title in here, to, uh, kind of explaining what the shot was. So I want to put a second title in here, so let's just come back to here. Let's add a title, let's add this one here called Focus. What happens is, if we press play, 
the text lasts for the entire section. And that is a pain. If you've got a really long clip, you don't necessarily want to have your title over the entire clip. And that's when the splitting becomes really important. So let's do this again. If we, if we wanted to put a title here and just put something called POTS, it's really easy now to actually use that splitting option and say, I only want the title to appear, let's say, I want the title to appear between this part of the video and this part of the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to split my video. So click here. We're going to, let's come back to edit. Click split. So I've split it. And I want it to be, so I'm going to split again. Highlight. Split. And split and so this clip now has been divided into three but as you scroll through we don't see any of the differences but now what I can do of course is I can add a title to this clip so I'm going to click on title and let's click, click on reveal and you can see now that instead of having a whole title for the entire clip in this section here as we scroll through click on I won't play it but you can excuse me scroll through no title, we're coming to this seamless transition, title appears for the duration of time that I wanted it for and disappears and now carries on with the rest of the video down the stairs. So using the split tool in combination with your titles enables you to actually be quite granular. You don't just have to have a video at the beginning, um, a title at the beginning, you can actually start labeling some of your clips by using that split function. So that's, that's a really good tip to remember. Right, the last thing I want to show you, and if you've stayed this far, thank you very much for staying so long in the tutorial. I hope you've got something out of it. Um, the last thing I want to show you is some of the advanced tools. So, you know, we've about basically shown you now how to manipulate the, um, this, uh, all the videos here, all the elements here. But let's come on to some of the more advanced stuff. Let's see, look at this video here. I can see in this, this video here, I'm beginning to advance down the stairs. And um, as you go, you can go into the garden, there's some more stairs here. But... I want to show you something else now. So if we come back to video, I took some other videos in here and some of the videos are videos of the return journey. So down here, for example, we're going down the stairs. Um, and what I want to show you is that there's a video I've got here that um, I can add to this particular tube video here, which will be quite fun. And the option I haven't shown you is the, uh, the ellipsis here, the right hand icon. When we click on the video options here, We've got some options in here that we can have a look at. And the middle one I want to show you is picture in pictures. If we click on this and it will put the picture in the screen for me. So we could see, for example, as I go down the steps, we can see what the up step version of the same view might be. So what we can do is we can click on this. We can actually move it. So I'm going to get rid of it. I'm just going to get rid of that. I'm going to put my playhead where exactly where I want it to be. So let's start here and do that again. I'll show you what I mean. Let's add this video here. I'm going to do this. Picture in picture. There. And it's going to play for the duration of my clip down here. Now let's have a look at the options we've got here. Now I've got this on top. You can see where it is there. I can click on it. And we've got some, some options here. So what I want to do is if I click on the um, edit button here, I can drag it um, around the screen so I can actually position it where I want it to be. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller. I'm doing that with, um, with the um, pinch um, gesture. So obviously um, pinch to make it smaller and stretch to make it bigger. And then I can just use single finger to move it around. I think I'll put it here. So this whole picture in picture thing is, is quite a, a good tool for you to look at and again the same the same, the same options um, apply we can edit the length of this this whole clip if we wanted to so if I wanted to come back into here and decide um, maybe I, what I'll do is I'll edit this so it's the, the same length as that clip so we're going from here to here you can see how I've edited that clip it will finish at the same time before we jump to the next set of steps so you can see the return journey we can click on here, we can do the audio. There's likely to be audio on here, so it might be a good idea to, to, to mute that. It is muted by default, but you can make it louder if you want to. That could be a bit confusing, so be a bit careful around that. You can um, change the position or change the, what you want to do. So if you wanted to make it side by side or above and below, you can click on here and do that. 
you be careful how you choose that it's entirely up to you um, and you can experiment with these options down here I, I'm going to stick with picture in picture because I prefer that um, you can um, you can, like I said, you can zoom it. We've done all of those options, and you can colorize it as well. Just so again, if you've got the same whole options going on here, you can have a really revolting color going in on the inside. I'm not going to use that, so I'm click none. Um, don't like those kind of gimmicks. And there we go. There's there's um, an advanced option here. And obviously, you know, you've got to be careful with things like your text in the right place. So you might decide, well, oh, actually, what I'll do is I'm, I don't want the text going over my picture in picture, so I'm going to shorten that. So as one fades out, the other one fades in. So text text disappears and my picture in picture appears. So not we, what we've seen, that's just to recap what we've covered here. I've shown you how to um, freeze a frame, how to split or, and, and, and cut a, a, um, a chunk of video clip it up, add photos, how to use a splitting function on a clip so you don't get the video title all through the same clip. We've looked at uh, audio and adding different layers and detaching audio so you can do some work with that. We've looked at picture in picture so you can see what's going on as you go up and down so you can use some good functions here with that. And really what you now need to know is how to save it. We've actually done, we've made our movie and you can see here in the top right hand, top, top of the screen here it says my movie number five. So now it's time to save this and save it and export it. So the last thing we've got to do in the top right hand, top left hand corner, sorry, is the icon to back. This comes back to my movies here. So what we're going to do is we're going to click on my movie and delete that and let's call it garden video. Click done to give it a name. And then you've got your options in here. So it's currently one minute and 28 seconds of loveliness. You can either, this, this option icon here, you can play it, or if you want to share it, you click on the middle share icon here, click on share, and you've got all the options. So you can share it to whichever account you want to share it to. So you can share it to your YouTube account. You can put it into iMovie Theater. But also what you can do is this option here, you can save your video, and you want to save it to your iPad to share elsewhere. So you can save it, save whichever format you want to save it in. And once you choose that, you can share it. Um, I tend to share straight to YouTube my videos, um, and it's entirely up to you. Thanks for watching this free tutorial. Your support is important to us, and we value your feedback. So please leave a comment below, and also don't forget to like us. Finally, if you learned a lot from this tutorial and you want to learn more, why not subscribe to us and you'll be automatically informed of our latest tutorials when we publish them. We aim to do this every week. Click on the link above to subscribe, you won't regret it. Thanks a lot for your support.